Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So today we get to take a look at the 2023 Ford Bronco Everglades. This one is also equipped with the Sasquatch package. It's finished off in a Zur gray metallic with an MSRP just over $53,000. Now this specific Bronco is powered by the 2.3 liter EcoBoost four cylinder engine that's paired to the 10 speed automatic transmission, pumping out 275 horsepower, 315 pound feet of torque. That power is primarily sent to the rear wheels. However, this does have the four wheel drive system propelling this 4,800 pound SUV from zero to 60 in around seven seconds. Top speed is 106 miles an hour. It also has a fuel capacity of 20.8 gallons You'll expect to see around 18 miles per gallon in the city, 17 out on the highway. This has a wheelbase of 116.1 inches. Its overall length is 198.9. It has a width of 75.9, a height of 78.7. Its ground clearance measures in at 11.7 inches. And it also has an approach angle of 37.8 degrees, a breakover angle of 26.3, and a departure angle of 37.1 degrees. As we move on to the exterior styling now for this Ford Bronco, a part of the Everglades package provides it with the winch that you will see integrated into the steel front bumper. So very cool to have that option, especially if you're overlanding or taking this off the pavement or you need to pull someone else out, you have that available. With the rest of the steel bumper, you'll notice too all of these screws here, you can actually remove. So if you wanna take parts of the bumper off, you can. However, with it in this stock form, that gives you that really good approach angle and you can get a sneak peek at the Bilstein tuned suspension for this. There's also skid plates up underneath and a really nice design for this grill. Ford made this a retro style for a modern Bronco paying tribute to the original. However, on this model, all of the letters for Bronco are blacked out. It's the first grill I haven't seen white for those letters, which is pretty cool. This does have LED headlights, DRLs, and turn signals nicely integrated into that dark gray grill with plenty of cutouts. And then for the hood, really nice bulge on the back section of it. And then we also have these attachments right here. You can actually go up to the accessory ready modes there and put wires there. So when you're going off road, branches can hit those and not scratch your paint, of course. You can use them for some other purposes too. They have a 150 pound rating which is pretty awesome to see. But we have a good looking front end design. And as we work our way to the side, the Sasquatch package provides us with the 35 inch tires and the 17 inch wheels. They are finished off in dark carbon gray. Very cool retro design for this model. This also has the high clearance fender flares, which are pretty thin, but give you a little bit more clearance, of course, up front and in the rear. And this also has a Bronco snorkel. So this allows this Ford model to wade through just over 36 inches of water. So you have a very capable SUV. We even have the Everglades badge with this really cool trail map and a Sasquatch, we found him. He's in the bottom of that sticker there. Now this also has the hardtop roof along with the roof rack system, which is currently installed. It has steel side steps. It looks like you can remove the step portion. So if you want just a slider, you can add the step for daily driving and take them off when you are hitting those trails. Really good design with the line going just above the door handles there. And then in back, full size spare with the same wheel, third brake light, wiper blade is located back there too. This does have LED tail lights and then the steel rear bumper with all the parking sensors. There's one tow hook and this can even tow right around 3,500 pounds. As we work our way to the cargo space now, we do have the swing style for the rear end. It does have a shock there and you can actually open that up pretty far. Even with a full size spare, it's not all that heavy. From there, we'll just lift the glass up and then you have access into the cargo space. So this is an SUV. It's very practical as a daily driver. We have the lassos there around each of the tie down hooks in all four corners so you can safely secure any items. Another Bronco logo. And if I lift up the floor, a little bit of storage space along with the tool kit. Now, one thing that is interesting to note, it does not have an area to place all the bolts when you take the doors and the roof off. I think that's something that it should definitely have. It is not located in the back here, but over on one side, we have a 12 volt with the Bronco logo there. We also have a little bit of storage and a, another connector there. So when you do take the roof off, you can attach that and have somewhere to put it. You can also fold down the back seats. There's a little bit of a step, not really all that bad and it makes it a lot more practical and usable, especially if this is your only vehicle. It's an SUV, 
So it is very, very practical. Now, as we work our way to the back seats, the interior on this model has a really nice look. We have some gray accents, both on the upper section, on the armrest, and then down on the grab handle. There's also a net down below too, so you can actually fit in a lot of items since you have that adjustable net. And then for the back seats, really nice two-tone design for these leather seats. And something really cool, I haven't noticed this on any other Bronco, we actually have a drain plug that we can open up. And we have the weatherproof all-weather floor mats here. So let's just say you're going off-road, maybe you have too much water in the vehicle, you can drain it. You really don't have to worry about cleaning it that much because it seems to be a really good material that can clean well. Now, as we hop up into the back at five foot 10, I have plenty of room for my feet and my legs. We also have this attachment here where you can place some smaller tools. Nets are just underneath that on both seats there. Right in the middle, we have the window controls along with some auxiliaries, even a three prong outlet. And as far as headroom goes, I have four or five, maybe six inches above my head. This hardtop also has the insulated pad too, just to make it a little bit quieter, a little bit less wind noise out on the highway. But I have plenty of room in the back. Now these seats do not recline, but they still have a good position to them. And then there's no armrest or anything right in the middle there. But we have a good look at visibility. You can fold down the headrest too when no one is in the back. And then a grab handle for that other passenger seat. This also has the keypad, or of course you can grab the door handle and use the key fob itself. But taking a look at the door panel now, just like the rear one with the same designs, we have a little bit more storage. And on all of the doors, there's also a lift point up underneath. Since you can easily remove these doors, I'll have a video down in the description taking a look at how to do that process. But it just makes it that much easier when you are ready to remove the door. And you'll notice too, that the side mirrors are not attached to the door. So that makes it much lighter. They're also pillarless too, which makes them smaller to store. And then for the front seats, Bronco logo right in the middle, two-tone design. These are manual adjusting. So we have those controls on the side as well as the bar up front to slide them forwards and backwards. And we do have a grab handle for the front passengers located right there. And with this steering wheel, it is finished off in solid leather. On the left side, cruise control settings, lane keeping assist and volume. Right side, you have a Bluetooth and voice commands along with tuning. And all of these are for the gauge cluster. So let's fire this back up where you'll notice that the engine start stop button is like the headlights with the DRL and turn signal right next to it. Would be cool to see that illuminate at night. Well, let's fire this up and hear what this EcoBoost sounds like. And looking at the gauge cluster now, on the far left side is miles per hour and the engine temperature. And then with the large digital screen right in the middle, currently it's showing fuel level on the left side, miles per hour and tack. And then on the right side, there's trip information. Now, if I push on the back arrow over on the right side of the steering wheel, my view is what we were currently in. But we can go to trip information, even go to the off-road tab and you can monitor all of this information in a little bit greater detail. So we can pull up pitch and roll, along with degrees for the steering wheel. You can pull that up in a little bit larger of a screen there over on the right side. And then you have tire pressure, you have some other things that you can monitor while you are hitting the trails. You can even pull up navigation, your phone, there's audio, and then various settings that you can go into as needed. So if I go back now, you can actually go through all that information in a little bit different of a view. So if you just wanna pull up some of these gauges on that far right, it's very easy to go through those. And then if you need more information, just go in through uh, the rest of this and you can configure what you'd like to and monitor all of that. In the lower section, there's your gear selector to see what gear the vehicle is currently in. And then over on the left side of the steering wheel, there's the headlight adjustments, dimmer switches for the gauges. There's the e-brake. One air vent is tucked away over on that left side. And then up top, there's a little bit of storage. There's even an area where you can attach different accessories so you can mount items up on the dash, which is really cool to see. Good bit of storage space running across both sides. Now, with the Everglades model, you do get some off-road goodies. You get a front locker, a rear locker, you get trail turn assist, which basically shortens your turning radius when you're going through the trails. There's traction control and your hazards too. And then right in the middle, we have a massive touchscreen system. In the lower section, these are all presets. So it's on audio right now. You can quickly get into your phone, pull up the navigation, even go into apps, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. 
There's settings that you can go into, a lot of general information, but anything you would like to set up. And then if we go into features, you have driver assistance. So you can go into this and go through all of these safety features, turn them on and off, just depending on how you would like it to react. There's even a towing tab too. So you can monitor all of that. Now, if you've been able to tell the entire right side of the screen has been in its own setting there because we do have the split style. So you can go through all of this. You can even pull it up in a little bit different of a view and swipe through all that information. So it's really cool to be able to have two different things on at once. We have the air vents on both sides of that. And then underneath we have power and volume for the radio as well as tuning. There's the engine start stop. And then we have all the climate adjustments. So this does have dual zone. We have the temperature along with heated seats too, fan speed, where you like the air to go and all of the defrosters. A Little bit of storage down below along with a few auxiliaries. You have your passenger grab handle along with the Bronco plaque. There are two cup holders. And then looking at the shifter, let's put this into reverse where we have the backup camera. If you push on the plus, now we have a downward facing angle with that backup line and assistance. There's drive and manual. You can use plus and minus. So if you're towing or if you're off the pavement, you can use those as needed. And then we have a lot of controls within this rotary dial. We have the GOAT modes. GOAT stands for goes over any terrain. And then we have two high, four high, your four automatic and four low, and then even the trail control. This is basically cruise control for off-road. And then if you rotate this dial, you can go through the various driving modes. So there's normal, there's also eco, there's a sport mode. You have slippery, mud and ruts, there's sand, and the last one is rock crawl. So depending on the terrain that you are in, it will automatically put it into the correct four wheel drive setting as well, which is awesome to see. Also right in the middle, we have these side mirror adjustments and all of the window controls since you can take the doors off. And in the center armrest, a little bit of storage. And then you have a lot more underneath that. Currently we have the winch control in there at the moment, but you have a good amount of space. Bronco is also over on the airbag cover and there's a lot more storage in the glove box there. Now up top, this also has a lot of auxiliaries. So if you're hooking up exterior lights, maybe compressors, you have a factory switch to plug all that into. Dome lights are just in front of that. And we'll take a look at visibility from the driver's seat. It's a pretty squared off vehicle. All the windows are extremely large. So that definitely gives you a lot of visibility in all directions. As we set off behind the wheel now for the Ford Bronco, if you're new to our channel, this is not the first Bronco that we've been able to drive or review and check out. We went to an off-rodeo event where we drove the Broncos off-road all day. We've had a few that we've checked out in general. We had the Ford Bronco Raptor for one week as well. That was awesome to check out and even take off the pavement. And stay tuned because we will be taking this Everglades off the pavement as well to really showcase what it can do in its natural environment. For this 50, roughly $50,000 Bronco, I think it's a really good option. I am not biased towards the Bronco. I used to own a Jeep Wrangler. If I had to do it again, the Bronco wasn't out at the time. I would buy the Bronco over the Wrangler, which is a whole nother topic and debate. Both are great, but I am a fan of the Bronco. The more that I've been able to drive this, not only does it have really good on-road performance because we do have that independent front suspension, it also has the capabilities to hang in the trails with the sway bar disconnect, which is an option in some other vehicles. It is missing on this one here. So that'll be something to point out when we take this off the pavement to see how it does without the ability to disconnect that. The Raptor had it. There's a few other Sasquatch packages and trim levels that will give you that switch. And so now let's test the power that this 2.3 liter EcoBoost four cylinder has. I put it into sport mode, which activates four wheel drive auto. And pedal to the floor. We get up to speed. It's not the most powerful engine that is available for the Bronco, but it's going to be one of the most economical for it. And it's pretty cool. You can hear the turbos just a little bit from that engine. So there are a few different engine options depending on the power that you want, all the way up to the Bronco Raptor, which has a lot of power. But as we're driving this down the road, I'm not sure if you will be able to hear or not, it does sound a little bit like the windows are down. It is a windy day today, so that, of course that's going to affect it. 
This is not as well insulated as vehicles that nothing can come off. So even on the Jeep Wrangler, it's very, very identical. It's not something that I want to point out as a negative. I would absolutely buy this vehicle, and that's something that you just have to kind of get used to in a sense because you can take everything off, the doors, the roof off. It's something that is to be expected with this type of vehicle. And in sport mode, second gear, here we go. Honestly, not that bad for shifting myself. It's not something that you're really going to be doing a lot in the Bronco, but if you need to hold the gear off-road or you're towing, you can use those as needed. One thing I will mention too, you can also go with a six-speed manual transmission. Actually, it's a seven-speed because it does have the crawl gear. So you have two different transmission options that you can go with as well. So now that we are behind the wheel, of roughly $50,000 for this Bronco. It goes all the way up to around 85 to 90 for the Bronco Raptor. You have a huge, huge price discrepancy depending on the trim level that works best for you. But for this Everglades, we have a nice interior as you've already seen. And we do have the smallest engine, but still has some good pep to it to get up and move. But I really like the Bronco. I like the visibility that you get. Everything is kind of squared off. We have a pretty steep rake to this windshield, very thin pillars too. You're very high up too. It's an SUV, but it's almost like a lifted SUV. Obviously we have the, the 35s and everything, so it is a bit taller, but you set up very high, which is nice. And it's not that big of an SUV either. So you have quite a small footprint to it as far as maneuverability goes, not only in parking lot situations, but even taking it off road. It's something that's pretty compact. So it's definitely easy to drive. And I can see the appeal for both this and the Jeep Wrangler. They are just fun SUVs. It's not something that I would say is a long distance vehicle. You can absolutely travel in the Bronco and the Wrangler and go long distances. But in my personal opinion, this is more of a city type of vehicle. On back roads like I'm on right now, it's something just to have fun with on some shorter distances. So the wind noise, things like that, it's not something that's going to annoy you over time because you're not driving it long enough for, for that to happen. But it's definitely fun to drive, very composed on the road. And it's, it's a fun toy is what I'll call it. It's definitely a, a good daily. You could absolutely daily it, uh, but very cool. You have so many different options. You can get a soft top too if you'd like. It's a little bit easier to flip up. However, I don't think you can do the roof rack system with the soft top. So you can get a bunch of accessories and options just depending on what suits you best for your Ford Bronco. But that is going to wrap it up for this 2023 Bronco Everglades. Make sure you guys subscribe, stay tuned for the off-roading video in this Everglades, as well as check out the rest of the Bronco content that we have. Give it a huge thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.